Hey guys, uh, today in this video, I'm going to walk you through uh, required steps for calling a function app method, which is create, which is uh, protected by Azure AD account uh, from a Windows application. So to recap previous videos, we uh, built a function app. We deployed that to Azure. Uh, we protected that uh, function app method with uh, Azure AD account and we managed to call that method from Postman. In this video, we want to create a Windows application and then call this protected uh, function app method from that Windows application. Uh, let's get it started. Uh, go to the Visual Studio. I use Visual Studio as an IDE. So go to the new project search for Windows form and pick up the C sharp Windows form application click on next name the project MSAL demo MSAL stands for Microsoft Authentication Library and that's the library name that we're gonna use in this uh, video and for the target framework we use .NET 5 Click on create. The project template is created. Um, just to make this video quicker, uh, I, uh, I've written the required code earlier. I just copy and paste code uh, to the project and just explain what the code is doing. All right, the project is created. First of all, I need to add a new get package to the project. Right click on project, manage new get packages. Go to browse and search for Microsoft Identity Client. Select Microsoft Identity Client and uh, install the latest stable version. So click on install. Okay, sounds good. It's installed now. Let's close this. Double click the form to create a form load method. Come back here from toolbox. The button on the form and double click the button as well. All right. So we need a class. So right click on the project, go to add new class and call the class constants. I'm going to put all our constants in this class. So just copy and paste code to make the video quicker. What we need here, we need a client ID, we need a tenant ID, scopes, function app URL, and function app key. So we need to grab this stuff from uh, Azure portal, go to portal, this is a function app that we deployed to Azure. Uh, if we go to authentication, this is the identity provider that we added for protecting this uh, function app. If you click on this app registration that has been created, uh, automatically by Azure. We've got a client ID here, so we copy that, paste it here. We copy tenant ID and paste it here. We go to the expose an API and copy the scopes and paste it here in the scope. 
you need function app URL and function app key as well. We go there. If we go back to the function app and then in functions, if you click on the function method name and then click on get function URL, copy this, go back here, paste it. Just need to cut the code part and remove this from here and put the code here. So now we've got everything that we need. Uh, save constant class and go back to the uh, Windows application file. We need a variable from Microsoft Identity Client NuGet package. So just define it here. We need to use that package name here. Then in the form load, we instantiate the object. Microsoft Identity Client object. Uh, what we need for uh, instantiating this object is uh, client ID and tenant ID, which is coming from our constants file. Uh, pay attention to this part. We need to uh, use with redirect URI uh, method and we need to pass uh, localhost as a redirect URI for Windows application based on the Microsoft documentation. And then we build the object and the result is going to the uh, client app object. Uh, what I'm gonna do is creating two methods. The first method is responsible for getting a token from Microsoft Identity Platform then we use this access token as a bearer token for calling the function app method. So the first method is called get access token. Uh, it's returning a string, uh, which is the access token. Uh, what I'm doing basically here, uh, I'm calling get accounts async method, uh, which is uh, looking in the uh, looking into the uh, uh, application local cache uh, to see if there is any account that have, has been logged in to this system uh, before. If there is any get that and put it in the accounts variable, then in the next step, we use the acquire token silent method. Uh, this method tries to log in user uh, silently. So what that means is, um, it doesn't ask user to uh, put in the username and password. Uh, it tries to use uh, the existing account and previous credentials from the cache to acquire the access token. Uh, if this method uh, is successful, thumbs up, you've got the access token. Otherwise, if uh, there is any error, an exception from MSAL UI required exception, it means that uh, it's not possible to acquire token silently. So we need to try to get access token interactively. And uh, what that means is uh, this method pops up a Windows browser and then a user needs to uh, put in its credential, username and password uh, in that form and log in to the system. Uh, if this method succeeds, then uh, we check that uh, the authentication result is null or not. If it's not null, uh, I've got a message box here to uh, display the access token for demo purposes. And then at the end, I'm just returning the uh, access token uh, to the caller method. What I'm going to do now, I'll just go to the 
uh, button click handler method and call this get access token method uh, okay, use configure await false to get rid of that uh, warning because it's a asynchronous method and we are calling that from a button handler uh, we want to make sure that the get access token is returning an access token before running the application we need to go to the Azure portal uh, in the function app section we go to the authentication again click on the app registrations in the app registration we go to the authentication again click on add a platform we pick up mobile and desktop applications and tick first one and add http colon slash slash localhost click on configure now we've got this uh, redirect uri if you don't create this here uh, you get an error message which is complaining about the redirect URI mispatch when you try to run the application. Okay, we're good here. Go back to the IDE, run the application. Right, I'm going to click on button one. To see what happened. Here you go. Uh, Windows browser pops up and he asks for uh, username and password because this is the first time I'm using this application. There is no uh, account in uh, application local cache, so it it's trying to log in uh, the user. Uh, interactively. So I pause the video, uh, put in my username and password, and then resume the video. After entering your username and password, uh, if the username and password is correct, you see this uh, message on the uh, browser screen, authentication complete, you can return to the application. So you can close the browser, and if you look at here, uh, that's the uh, access token uh, that we require that for calling the uh, function app method. So it's working perfectly fine. Uh, the next step is calling the function app and using this access token as a bearer token. So let's do this. I want to add a new method here. So let's just Perhaps that one and a new method here which is called call function app so uh, in this method we use the uh, acquired access token in previous step to call uh, the function app method uh, before that we need to install newtonsoft.json package installed we need to a couple of usings here now we are okay so just quickly uh, give you a bit of context about what this uh, method is doing we are getting the access token from previous step uh, for calling the uh, function app function app method x uh, expects a message body that I'm creating that message body in JSON format here we have the attribute name here and this is the attribute value the attribute is name and its value is uh, Ali uh, 
uh, what the function app is doing basically uh, it's uh, returning a message uh, if you pass a name to that as say hello to that name so if we pass Ali it says uh, hello Ali something like that uh, we create a HTTP request message uh, function app uh, accepts post action so we choose post and uh, this is a function app URL uh, which is coming from the constants file and then we put the content that we created here as a body. Uh, we need to add a function key to the headers. So we use headers.add method uh, to add X functions key and the function app key, which is coming from constant again. Uh, then uh, we need to add the bearer token to the auto header authorization. Uh, we use bearer here and then the access token from previous step. Then we create a HTTP client object and we send the created request message uh, to the uh, function app URL. Uh, then we get the return content and we check if the status code is okay. It means the operation has been successful so we uh, display the return content in a message box otherwise there is an error so we um, show the error message uh, in the message box let's call this function so now um, what i'm gonna do is using continue with method here and all function app or dot result we need to call call function app method after uh, get access token so continue with uh, guarantees that this method is called after uh, this one because this is a synchronous method uh, once it's done then the call function app is called and the return value of the get access token is in the uh, R variable and R dot result is our access token basically. Let's run the app to see how it works. Press control F5 on the application click on button one i need to put in my username and password so i uh, pause the video and put in my username and password and resume that again all right as you see the authentication is complete so we can close this we've got the access token in the message box click on ok and here you go We've got the second message box, which is displaying the API result, which is hello Ali. This is a HTTP trigger function executed successfully. So this result is coming from the uh, function app method. Uh, if you want to see uh, what was the function app uh, code body or how we deployed that or how we protected that, uh, using Azure AD, you can uh, refer to the previous videos. Uh, but in this video, uh, I show you how to call a protected function app by Azure AD uh, in a Windows application. So, uh, if you want to call uh, this kind of uh, function app from uh, different consumer application, not mobile application or web application, uh, it's the uh, same concept it's not a big difference thanks for watching this video if this video helped you please like and subscribe to support us for making more videos thank you bye